what is up with it? All these fairy tale stuff, these announcements, everything about it, the news, and then we had the last chapter before ending the whole two chapters per week for an entire month. Well, month length, but you know, we just have that last one, which is actually pretty damn good. So good. So, what's up with this week? <laughs> this is, well, actually, this all news happened since Friday. And I just ended recording on Friday, uh, Friday morning, no less, just to see, you know, see there's no n- announcement to be made. I'm calling it a slow week. And then all of a sudden, all these fairy tales stuff just come out. And I think it was all because it was just leaked. I think that's the case. So, ah, I, I guess I should have waited longer, right? But, you know, things happen for a reason. And I guess I could start using this episode to talk about all these announcements that just came by from Fairy Tale. And, you know, that's pretty much where they got the most out of it. So, all right, we're going to talk about that. But first, allow me to say this is episode 15 of Sparta's World Podcast. I'm your host, Sparta's 3G, coming with another episode. And we are doing this new style. Okay, it's not that new. But I am going to say this. We're going to have more. We're going to have a transition this time around. And if you hear the song, then you know what series I'm going to next. If you're not familiar from that because you probably haven't watched the anime, then, well, you get used to it from here. <laughs> so that's the only thing I could say. But seriously, that's what I'm going to be doing from this point forward. And, you know, I'm still trying to think how to get an intro for myself. I'm thinking of how to get an intro. Because, you know, I like to start off with a with a, a good mood and then start talking and then do the whole podcast recording. Instead of, like, just start off with a blank, me, uh, you know, interesting. Or, you know, you want to you wanna start off strong, of course. So, I got to think about that in the time being. But for now, we have this recording... In a normal style, in more or less formal way with a transition. And not only that, I am going to change up a big, a uh, little bit right here. Okay, I don't know what the schedule is like for Bacano Hero Academia. But I'm going to say now that the, that manga is going to be reviewed in a Friday episode from this point forward. Now, there's a good chance those chances probably not end up coming those Fridays anymore. Or probably come even earlier, but... In the time being, I'm going to use Friday for my sake. For make it uh, balance out with three chap- three manga series per episode. Uh, now, I know there is a chapter that was released past Friday. I'm going to save that for this Friday's episode. So, pretty much, we're going to have a two episode... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, two chapters review in that episode. So, that's the case for Baka no Hero Academia. I don't know if that schedule will remain the same from this point forward, but and then again, it might, if anything, even if they get some more supports and the chapter starts to release earlier, it might end up just going to come out on a Thursday rather than like a day later Friday. Lately, they have been releasing it much early this time around, which is a good thing for, for fans of the series as well as for me, so I could actually review on time. Not only that, but, you know, I'm also, you know, I, I can't say I'm a fan of the series, but I am intrigued what is going on with the series, as well as the whole overall presentation, especially the art itself, which I found growly fond of it. So I, I am looking forward to see how much it can grow from this point forward, especially how the series is at the point that is pretty much could be a showcase of how well this series can go in terms of a battle shonen you know so that's what's going to be like for Baku no Hero Academia so now this episode will have three manga series to cover and I'm also going to change it around as well it's going to start off with fairy tale and then we talk about seven deadly sins and then we end it off with Tokyo Tokyo Ghoul Re. So that's how it's going to work out for this point forward. So, now that that's all covered, let's talk about the news. Now, as you may have heard, Fairy Tale is, hasn't, hasn't, hasn't gotten a movie for since, I think it's 2012. Yeah, 2012 was the last time we got a, they got a movie. 
And, you know, I don't know how well it did. I don't even I haven't seen the movie myself. But the fact that they didn't make a movie for a while, I guess it I guess it was just a one time thing. I guess the box office wasn't that well. I don't know. Maybe they just want to just do one movie, whatever. But now the case seems to be a turnaround and it seems like they are in fact making a new movie. Storyboard by Hiro Mashima himself. So that is interesting to see because I thought, you know, I we were not getting any more movies from these guys, but apparently I was corrected. <laughs> so, you know, I, I I do wanted to see the movie because, um, well, not only is fairy tale and it's something I should try to get out of the way, but maybe because I'm 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 still surprised. I think if I heard correctly, I'm still surprised that the. The soundtrack for the movie is done by the guy who, uh, the composers who done Final Fantasy, no less. And if that's really true, geez, how the hell they got them? But I actually want to hear the music, the soundtrack. Granted, I could just YouTube them, but I do want to just, you know, want to see the movie myself. The presentation looks fine. I, I thought the animation looks decent. I, I, I haven't seen a, mo- I haven't seen more trailers in himself so I probably don't remember how everything really works out but I do want to see the movie um the second movie seems interesting just judging by the the color spread which I thought it was based on the chapter so I made a mistake in there I thought it was actually from the chapter but it's actually I mean you know the 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 contact within the chapter but it ends up being a, a cover for the movie which it seems like it's gonna be about Natsu going to uh, becoming a dragon. You know, don't you? If you recall, if you recall back then, this um, these dragon slayers can in fact turn to a dragon the more the power they use. So I don't know that that's what's happening in the movie. Well, it might be like that, or something else that could just try to make uh, Natsu into a dragon. Whatever the case is, the art did look pretty damn cool, but. Yeah, that is the movie. I made a mistake thinking it was part of the uh, chapters, a part of the manga, part of the series. Instead, it's actually from the movie. So, yeah, I made that mistake. That's that was that was it was a spoiler to begin with. So I thought it was part of it, but yes, that's actually for the movie, which actually got me interested to see how this works out. Especially this is done by the manga cut himself. So. That is uh, one of those major news they talk about from the last issues with the last two chapters um, from last week. That that was it. That was the big major announcement. The whole new movie plan. And then, they, in the same time, that they also hype it up the chapter you do not want to miss. And when they say that, I was thinking, you know, i actually actually curious what, what's so hype about. And I'll let you know right now, it did deliver. It's, it's, it's mainly due with the second second chapter of the two part, two chapters release. And it's really worth it. So, um, yeah, it seems like Fairy Tales on the road from all that crazy uh, one month of two chapters released per week. The whole movie announcement. Then you got the whole new original anime DVD announcement. Uh, it's I believe it's supposed to be based on the one shot, this uh, fairy penalty game. So that's also coming out as well. It's just more announcements. Just don't keep on rolling. And then for the United States side, they're getting they're getting a fairy tale masters edition, which is going to be released on October, of, uh, October of 2015. And it's supposed to, what it is is a box. It's a box that carries five volumes. And yeah, it's five volume with a neat box cover, and it's going for thirty nine ninety nine. So you know, if you're a fan of it, if you have a, well, now is a good time to try to go for those box set. It seems uh, I have the, uh, there's no box cover yet, but I'm pretty sure the the box cover might look I'm most likely gonna end up looking pretty nice. And you know, kind of I have seen a lot of them like One Piece. Fa- um, not fair to <laughs> they about to get theirs. Full Metal Alchemist, Bleach, Naruto, and you know so on. Uh, some of them are usually based on the 
on the other covers itself. Not really an uh, original box card. But I do think this one might be original box art, but I could be wrong. Maybe they just probably reuse an image from a uh, uh, old color spread. But we'll see what happens. Other than that, that's the that's the uh, new um. That's just uh, something that you know for man- manga collectors or stuff or people who endure the series could go for. Which um, will I go for it? Um, you know, I I I can't say I'm the huge fan of Fairy Tale or a fan of Fairy Tale. I enjoy the series though. But maybe I'll give it time until it makes me say, you know what, I'm a collector. Why not? It's a, it, it, was, it is what it is. I haven't thought about that yet. But, you know, if if you like the series and if you really want to buy them, if you really want, really want to collect them, you know, go for it. If you want to go for the Master Edition for a collection, then go f- and go for that as well. It's coming out in October, so you have a, plenty of time to save up. So that's all the fairy tale news. The movie announcement, the original anime announcement, and for the United States side, the whole master edition that's going for thirty nine ninety nine. Five volumes. It's actually a pretty good price. And with a box with a probably unique box art box art, that's all good that's all good to go for. So we have Dragon Ball Supers. Now if you don't like the anime, I don't know why, <laughs> but if you don't like the anime I, if you don't like the anime, well, there's a good news. They get themselves a manga adaptation. So, you're going to get not only the anime original, uh, not only you're going to get a new series of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super, you're also going to get a manga a manga adaptation of Dragon Ball Super. And it's, it's done by Toyo Taro, who's the, who's the, who's the person that done... Resurrection of F, the the revival of F, whatever it's called, the one that's pre prelude to the movie itself. So, yeah, if you don't like the anime, go for the manga, manga as they go for. <laughs> so, it's interesting how they really are putting a lot of money into this Dragon Ball series. Kind of surprised Toriyama didn't is not doing this. Then again, I'm not really surprised because I do believe Toriyama is in fact going to do a new series, um, I which it has not been announced. And, I, and I'm not talking about Dragon Ball Super. He's not. I mean, it's it's, it's his plan, sure, but it, he's not really um, working on it. But it is his plan. Every drawing board, storyboard, whatever you name it. Uh, character design and everything else. The only thing he's not the thing he's not doing is directing. You know, um, the the real <clears throat> the real guy. Pretty much, he he write the entire story. He write the characters. He write what's going to happen. He hands it to somebody. Profit. That's how that's how he does it. So for the manga adaptation, it's obviously going to be based on the anime. Whatever happens, happens. But it will be translated in a manga form. So again. If you're not a fan of the anime, <laughs> somehow, then you'll be fan. Maybe you could try the manga itself. And supposedly they're hyping it so much to say you'll be very shocked how how well it will be. Um, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for both. <laughs> Let's see what happens. We'll see. What- this Dragon Ball Super is coming out in July. I don't know if there's a release date. If I miss it, then please correct me. I think it's going to come out on Sundays. So, that's how it's going to be like. And I am interested to see how this Dragon Ball Super goes. I mean, I know... I know I'm not saying, like, oh my god, it's going to be the most amazing anime ever. Or the amazing series of all. Or whatever like that. But, you know, I, it's nostalgia. Nostalgia is going to win me over this. But I'm not going to call it a masterpiece or anything like that. I'm just looking forward to it because it seems like... It, it it seems it seems strange that something history is coming back in a new form. Of course, with Dragon Ball Super, and I know it is milk. I know it is made for cash, like Dra- like Digimon Adventure Try. Even though I never thought they actually cared that much to go back, but it almost seems like it targeted more to the United States audience more so than the J- Japan audience. But like I said. I'm just going to see it here because this is, is astonishing to be around this time to actually see a sequel to the series rather than a remake. I was penny on remake, but 
here we are going to get a sequel. It's going to be good. I don't know. It's going to be bad. I don't know. It's just going to be something to be interested. That's for sure. All right. So that's no. That's all for the news. So let's get to down to the manga themselves. Up oh, first, fairy tale. Well, So after the announcements and all the, the development that's going on with Fairy Tale, what's the best way to end a month of two chapters per week? Well, how about a really good damn chapter at the end? I'm serious. This is actually has a really good chapter. And I'm not talking about 435, but 435 was decent. It was pretty decent to see how Gajio and the other guys are coming back all reunited with the fairy tale groups, and it had some good comedy in there. So, needless to say, while the first one was pretty decent, the second one is the most talked about chapter, which is definitely the the real me- main course. So, four thirty five, pretty decent. Four thirty six, really good chapter, and it's a, it amazed me that fairy tale, or more of more of Mushima, managed to capitalize me. As in catching my intention to see what's coming up next in the story of fairy tale, which is strange because you know fairy tale is a simple story and it's more of a fun adventure, more so than trying to talk about a very um uh capitalizing story. So you know it it, it actually feels like he he's going back to his days of writing rave. Or rave master for in, for English in terms of anime at least, and so coming to see this um, fully fledged out story or fully fledged development uh, the, coming from the past of Zero, it seems like if it, it feels it only tells me that if Mashima managed to write this kind of story, it just it it feels like Fairy Tale could have been a really good series. If not even great. That's how far he can do. It's not that I don't think he can write. I do believe he can write. It's just maybe fairy tale is not the uh, it's not the target. It's not the real target. That you know we probably wanted to see. That we got from Rave. And it seems like because of that. Uh, fairy tale is going to be a simple short story. With a story that just only going to follow. Of a fun adventure. And maybe not really try to capture the mind of the the older audience. And just go for the younger audience. Like, you know, target for like a much younger than the teenager. Granted, they got fan service. And I don't believe there was that much of a fan service in Rave, if I last recall. But, you know, again, this made this series is, probably, is most likely because it's after a different target audience. So, seeing the, the writing system that happens in this the the last chapter, the four thirty six, it just seems like wow, it feels so refreshing to see this. It's not that the series is really bad. It's actually a, a fun series. It's just you know a lot of people wanted to see a very strong story or a very good writing and stuff like that, and it doesn't really want doesn't really want to see a simple writing such as what we get from the past fairy tales, um, you know, arcs and all that stuff. You know, you usually get the just a usual shonen style of the series. And, you know, it's not so bad. It's just, I guess you wanted more. We wanted more and stuff like that. Especially if some of us come from Rave. Rave was actually a good series. So here is it's a popular series. So that's a big, that's a difference from between those two. It's just that we wish it could be, um, you know, like a Rave, but expand, expanded with his own universe. So it seems like we're finally getting that. Is it is it coming? Is it be, is it happening because it's it's coming to the end? I don't know, but we 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 don't know what's the next story is going to be unfold. So with that said, I'm I'm actually surprised to be interested to see what's coming up next. Right so now, we're going to go with 435 because it is the end, it is the conclusion of the Avatar arc, or more of a let's show off the powered up characters after the time skip arc, which is usually a common thing 
in a shonen series or just a lot of series that always usually come back from a time skip. But in this one, it's no exception. So again, we have Nasu just defeat the that battle of battle god, and after after he beats that, everybody fled because why not? This guy just defeated a god, or you know what I mean? It's like one of those big giants, the fourteen one of the fourteen giants. So you can't really blame these guys just to run away. Then Gajo and the other and the others so finally arrive and they finally take it down. Everyone arrested and every single one of them. So pretty much everybody got everybody everybody are united, which is um good to see after so long. Well, in 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 terms of time skip, because it's not that long in terms of uh chapter manga material, because I think it's only just about twenty chapters. I I could be wrong, but it's not too long. So, but in, in story wise, it's it's good to see that everybody's back with Levi and Lucy interacting. You know, they heard rumor. She heard rumors that the, these guys. Join the council, and they and this is in fact true. And then we have Nasu. He's like, "Hey, love you." And hey, the guy who looks like Gajio. He's like, "We me look guy look like Gajio." And this is actually a funny thing because this it it does it like I like how I I reacted at the same time understood. I think um, seeing Gajio in in a council was a bit shocking because you know concerning his attitude and all that. Now the only the only reason why it made sense is because Gachu is actually a smart guy, and even though he's rowdy at times, he 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 does he does think and he does know what to do. I mean, he was a spy. That's a and he managed to over he managed to outsmart them. So that's already a a feat of, a feat of um, of his character in order to. Be a councilman with, and let alone his strength and power and wits. So, and then you got Levy. That's like already got more smarts. That's that's just like twice as smart, if not more, because you know Levy is pretty damn smart. So then they all they all come together, and Gaja is pretty much wanting to arrest every single one of them, even if it's a stupid reason. So, you know, I I, I actually find these tib- tidbits um, kind of funny, to be honest with you. Because, you know, I, I, I guess because Gajo is, is um, I can't say he's underutilized, but he's not over, he's not really utilized as much as I wanted to be, or more of a, not much um, being used, because we always get to see um, Grey, Natsu, Urza, Lucy, and Wendy, which they're fine for the most part, but, you know, I, 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 I do appreciate to see more Gajo, because he's just a... He could be a he could be a really funny guy at times, and he's a he's a good character, in, in no less. So him <laughs> trying to arrest everybody for r- random reasons, it's like Lucy for showing up to Michigan, uh, Juvia for being a puddle of water, Happy for eating too much fish, Wendy, well, just just the fact that you just the fact he has to line up well and just make her <laughs> understand what does it be like, which I actually find that far funny. He's like, what's that even me? <laughs> So that whole thing was kind of funny, and then I actually admit it was kind of funny to have Urza. I was like, "All right, you got you got to stop playing around, with trying to be too much of a lookalike of Gajo." He's like, "Why you keep saying that?" And then he's like, "He's like, well, Gajo, this Gajo is a real thing." And then everybody's like, "Holy crap, you you were serious?" So everybody really took the took it to the to the heart. It's <laughs> pretty much Urza and Manasa were really serious. Didn't think Urza would be that serious, but she was. So I thought that was kind of funny. But um, yeah, they pretty much um won the victory. They won the battle. They celebrated in the old fashioned fairy tale style, or more like any shonen style. They all celebrate. But it's actually a nice double page panel of seeing everybody coming together. Now I don't know if they're really together because you have um, Gaju and Levi in the in the council, or uh, as well as with Panther. I don't know if they're gonna go back to fairy tale, you know, going back with those guys. They can, maybe it's an option. I don't know if there's an option that says I quit, or maybe there's there is no option and they're just gonna stay at council. Like God just said, he's hiding in the guilds, which is true. But you know, you know, they probably might say like, oh God, you know, guilds is always forever on, so let's I'll go back to that. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but. We'll see it in the next chapter or the, or so. And I do believe we might get it in the next chapter. Unless they really go focus to that part. But we'll get to that soon. 
So you pretty much celebrate, and there's only one thing to leave off. Saber two first there, and then we have Frost disappear, and that's where Frost and Gray come to me to me, and pretty much Gnosis is still under the pressure that something bad is going to happen because the future Rogue told them that Gray will be the one that kills Froch. Um, this is a little bit disappointing. Funny in this scene, disappointing in the over in the hindsight. Now, Gray and Froch meet up, and Gray actually got a better look at Froch, and he finds him very cute to the point that Gray kind of is kind of kind of seems very out of place in there with him looking all too innocent, like to Nasu's, like, what the hell. I mean, I was saying what the hell too, because I I, it's, I don't recall seeing Gray doing that kind of expression, but that's what happens when you find something cute, I guess, for Gray. And yeah, this is Juvia, new love rival, as so she say. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of that kind of subplot, which is a little disappointing because it feels like it could have gone something interesting to see Gray gone evil. For the for the reason of the sh- the, sh- the, sh- the the shadow power the the demon power, but instead it's just more of a way of saying time has been altered because future rogue and future Lucy came into that timeline and now everything else has changed. Not everything has been the exact same. So yeah, that's pretty much what they try to tell us. Time has altered. There's every every timeline has their own ways has their own problems. And in this case, there is no problems between Grey and Froach. There's no problem between Grey and Rogue that makes Rogue into a, a to the dark go to the dark side. So in the, in the end it all ends well and you know not to pretty much drop it and just laugh it off. All happy. Everybody's happy. And you know, it's, again, it's nice to see them reunited. Kind of pretty disappointed that the great thing is not gonna happen. But what can you do? I guess it was just only used for the plot to meet up with Gray and the other guys, which worked. But, and, but again, I kind of wish it kept the, that storyline. But well, whatever. So other than that, you know, this whole Avatar arc was just pretty much to show off the power of these fairy tale group. You know, we have all of us. We have we have, we have, we got to see everybody's pretty much in in that group at least. We got to see Urza in his new armor, which her new armor, which looks pretty damn cool. Wendy can do Dragon Force at whim. Lucy could do Star Dress, and Star Dress is proven that those are a powerful assets to her. Gray can really freeze up easily. Um, not sure what you could say for Juvia, but I guess you could say she she's more stronger. And Nasu, of course, he's just stronger, and he could do that. He could do his um his father's flame now with that burning fist that he just done. So yeah, it's pretty much a showcase of them. That's all it, this whole thing matters in the end. So Avatar, uh, Avatar Guild was never made to be a threat. It, I thought it would be until Nasu went in there and just one shot every uh three guys. So after that moment, it's pretty much giving you the idea this arc wasn't made to be that serious. So if you were thinking if it's going to be a serious arc, you are going to be heavily disappointed. If you only think it's just going to be a show-off case, then you won't be as disappointed. Some disappointment there, here and there, but overall, it's just it is what it is. And I, I, I guess I enjoyed it for the for the reunion interaction with this fairy tale character, and that's about it. But the real meat is in the 436. Now, 436, I don't know what's going to happen after 436. But it does seem like 436 came out of nowhere in terms of why is this showing us. But unless the next chapter or the next arc, rather, is going to be about the end, then this um this is appropriate to do this right now. So pretty much 436 is all about Zero Pass. And... This is where the writing actually gets really good, which I'm shocked to see. But then again, not too shocked because this is the guy who did the rave, and I thought rave was good. It's just that it's been so long to see him actually put a lot of thoughts to it. Not saying not saying not putting a lot of thoughts will make it a, a weak series, but it actually makes it uh, more um, complex, and it just makes it more refreshing to say the least. So Zeref, we get to understand Zeref his whole past. 
we get to see from like the ground up where he was in the academy and he written <clears throat> he written like a works that talks about their life and death and you know it, it sounds astonishing at, astonishing at first but the problem is he just it is it, is going against the will it's going against their their god that the they they learning about he's learning about life and death and it's a taboo and it's and it's, and it's best to never to talk about death especially 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 like bringing back one death and you know, again, this is actually going against. This it is it, 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 it reminds me of Full Metal Alchemist in terms of like go, talking about life and death exchange, and you know, it gets more similar to that when it's down when it gets to the part where he was trying to resurrect his brother. Now we found out that he had a brother, but he died shortly after his birth, so never got to know. You never got to really know him that much, and. This is where Zeroth starts to un- starts to learn more and more about life and death and exchange and the ways to bring him back. You know, with the art system he was demonstrating to the people, people were uh, fascinated by it. But at the same time, it's, it sounds pretty damn bad because it's again it's going against the the academy. It's, it's taboo to the god and, and because he's tampering with life. And that's just that's just um you know pretty much only asking for the worst outcome. He's only asking for something that the god would punish him for or something like that, as he would say. You know, his teacher or his professor was telling him, "You got to stop doing this. You got to stop talking about. You got to stop. You stop. Stop tampering life. Stop. Stop playing with life by bringing the dead. That's not going to happen." He didn't say he, he can't bring his brother back, but that would be at the very end of the flashback. Well, more of an end of the Academy days. But you could tell the professor is really trying to not to tell, not to do it. And, you know, you try to give him chances because you can see he keep growing up. He keep, he's, a, he's a smart guy, but the problem is he's going for the wrong direction, talk, talking about life. And, you know, he, he, he keeps for, uh, asking God to forgive him. Um, you know, don't want it to get cursed by the god. Then later timeline, he tried to do the eclipse system as the time traveling, which actually actually makes sense for making him to do the time traveling, trying to find a way to find the timeline to get his brother back from the dead and actually take him in that world. So, you know, of course, he never think about what will you do if you go back in time? What will happen if you alternate in the timeline? What what will you do then? You know that never occurred to his mind, or maybe it did. But again, it's it's all for his brother's sake. He really wants to save. He wants to help his brother, save his brother. He wants his brother back. That's all he do. He made these um, theories, these hypotheses, everything, these experiments, just to bring his brother back. Now it got him too far to the part that he is banished from the academy. He, he, they can no longer take her because all he does is just try to find a way to bring his brother um, back from the dead, which is already a taboo enough. And then, you, you know, he, he he can't believe he's going to get banished for this. And he, the professor just straight up tell him, you can't bring him back. You can't. So uh, this is where the be- this is where the curse begins. And once it begins, this is forever on him. And no, needless to say, of course, if you recall, his curse it just kills everybody. It does kill everybody, with from professor to the entire students, pretty much clear out the entire academy, which is pretty damn dark. And not to say because of the curse he has, but the uh, it's just the fact that how it's done, like the way how it's being said that Zeroth, he, he, you could tell oh, when he when he was talking about life and death. And before his the time when his brother did die, he was always interested about life. I guess you could say because he was always amused by the the world itself, the living things, the living beings of the world, to the point that he's now cursed. That every time he loves life, or every time you get approached to life, it would just die in front of him. And to make matter worse, he is cursed to be immortal. So... He can live forever, but he can't really, 
but he, the but the fact that he's just gonna keep passing by and just steals people's lives, as he was saying, like the more he li- loves life, the more he just steals them, and it's not his fault because he's been cursed now. Um, I'm not sure how much that will play in the future, but you could tell, you know, from the past arcs, you could tell Zero isn't really a, that much of a bad guy, just more of an innocent guy with a terrible curse. To the point that he might as well just ended everything else since he has nothing to go against him anymore. He tried to create, he created demons, as you notice from the Tartarus arc. He created them in order to get himself killed because he wants to die. He can't, he can't die since, you know, nobody can approach him. When you approach him, he would die. So he wants to die. And so far that came out. Of a very dud like, and you know these 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 demons were actually called etherealists Ital, Ital, before, so yeah, this is where the e comes from. And then again, since he could he could have killed he could have the demons kill him, so he managed to create one perfect opportunity, and it actually mixed up with his um his de- demands. And the thing about this is, is that not only it meets his demand, but the fact that he was, he's complex. He's in a complex world because he, on one hand, he wants to die and he hates to be cursed. And he hates the fact that he could no longer really approach to anyone living being because he will kill them. On the other hand, he's happy to actually start to learn all the magic in the world, including the ways to bring back his brother, which ends up being the case, and is 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 actually makes the character so good with this, makes him very complex to see how he doesn't know what to really feel. Like he, on one hand, he hates it because he's cursed for for this kind of lifestyle that he wants to die. On the other hand, he's happy to have this lifestyle. So he can actually um, further re- his research and further his magic power and learn everything about it to the point that p- perhaps maybe he should do that at his own whim to take down the world, take down the mankind and everything else approached to him. So he's really, it's really complex. Like it doesn't, he doesn't really know if this is good or this is really bad. So it actually makes him more dimensional. But now he brought his brother back and. This is where the shocking comes in, and the brother ends up being Natsu. Now, I don't get too much of it, but it's supposedly Natsu is his brother, and he brought him back with his dark magic, black magic. He brought him back, and because of the black magic, even though he brought him back, he managed to make Natsu into a partial demon. So, he's, well, the thing is, you know, Natsu was a human before, so maybe the black magic made him a demon. On the other hand, some people are saying that Natsu is created from a brand new soul, or rather, based on the the book of book of N, and put him into the the uh, a dead a dead uh, pause reanimation body of Zera's brother. So in other words. A new soul in Zara's brother, which is still Nasu, but it's a different person inside. Now, we don't know if that's the case. I don't know what to believe, to be honest with you. I just know his brother is back, but I don't know in what form. It stopped before we get to see Nasu interaction with Zara. We only know Zara created him, and he's so happy to bring his brother back. So I felt like he did a good deed in the end. It almost seems like you don't understand if he really doesn't like it or he or he really does like the fact he's immortal and managed to bring back his brother from the dead. This makes it very complex. And, and I do like the fact that he was going to talk about how Natsu and Igneo meet and they got and they started to bond. Or how Mavis and Zeroth meet and what's their relationship for another time. So in a way it does give you the idea we will learn these. And these were these two elements of the story are important. So I'm happy that Mashima is in fact going to address these in the future. So that ends the task. And again, it only brings more question exactly how Natsu 
how Nasu, you know, not know Zeroth and how he meets Ignu. And it does it does make sense with the idea of like being much old as in like past four hundred years. Now I just don't know like I just don't know like how how, how the situation with Igneo how Nasu not really know Zeroth. On one hand he was young that he when he died. So maybe maybe that's the case. But we'll see how this goes. So it's a lot. It's, it, it, it really makes sense, though. I really like how they they uh, displayed the entire eclipse system, and the art system, and everything that came from Zeroth. And it may, it feels like everything is being torn down by Nasu and the gang, which is funny because that's what we have been seeing for the past arcs. And seeing this bring a, seeing the whole thing coming together, it, it actually makes this very really constructed story. So. I gotta give a huge credit to Mashima for making this sense out of it. There's more to make sense out of it, and I hope it doesn't really mess up in the timeline consistency. But we'll see in the down the future. And then we have Zara going to meet up some guy, and it ends up being Arkanolugia. But this time he's in a human form, which he actually actually look kind of damn cool. He, I, I gotta say that Mashima, the uh, Mashima design has been really. Showing off in a really cool way. Again, we even have that double. We even have that promotion for the movie, which I thought it looks pretty damn cool. And here, there's no exception in terms of of his design. He really comes off look like a final bad guy, a final boss. And you know, it does brings a lot of questions with Zeroth and Arkanulugia. What is exactly who he wants? What exactly does he want? Like he could technically take down the world if he wants, but what does he? But what is his goal? Just destruction? It seems simple-minded. So in in in, in Zero is right. It, it seems too simple to me. It feels like we're going to learn more about him in the future as well. And it seems like you know the idea, the fact that he became a dragon slayer only to become a dragon and only to take to bring destruction only raise a lot of questions what's up with that what was that his game was that all his his, his mind and intention it brings a lot of questions to that so we didn't get no answer to that but i feel like we're going to get to a lot of answering in the future uh, with with i'm not sure how soon but if, if if the next arcs is going to be about those guys maybe very soon but we'll see what happens but it's interesting to see how they confront each other how the, how he waited to see anyone to match him up, anyone to um you know meet the expectations, and Zara was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna help you with that. So they so it kind of signified they might fight each other. I don't think we're going to see it in the next chapter, which is be a bummer. But it sounds like insane, insanely interesting to see Zara and Arkanolugia to actually going against each other. Or maybe actually help each other, which is the way worst case scenario. Since Bazero is in fact going to take down him, mankind, and everything else that goes against him. So, you know, it, I don't know what's the next direction for that part of the story. But that's where the chapter ended. So, 335 was a, de- was a pretty decent chapter. Nice to see them call me back together, more or less. And you know they all the arc ended, so it's nice to see that ended, and now we might get the real arc in the next chapter. And then with the whole four thirty six, it's just a pretty good chapter with well written, well written dialogues and the entire explanation of the story, make it more complex on how Zeroth come down to with the curse and make manage to bring back his brother. You know, it, it, it actually really adds more to the. To the character of Zeroth, which I really like, and now I really appreciate the, his characteristic, and I appreciated his, um, you know, determination to bring back his brother, despite the fact that he ended up being cursed and end up being, you know, pretty much, um, pretty much, uh, get a sacrifice. As in, you want to bring your brother back, I could give you a timeline, or I could give you a mortal to give you the world to find a way to bring your brother back. However, I'm gonna curse you, and you're going to steal people's life because that's what you love right so it it, it, it brings a lot of um it, it does remind me of rave as well which is his older work but you know again doing incorporating with fairy tale his newer work his popular work 
you know, it actually makes it more so much um it makes it makes it better and it makes it feel like you just hope that it could continue on like this. I mean, of course you're gonna have a cool down since Fairy Tale is more of a cool down guys. But um you're just gonna hope for like when it comes to the battles, when it comes to the fight with these guys, just hope it just lives up to this name. You just lives up to the hype, you know. But we'll see in due time. Don't try to get too much expectation. But again, 436 is definitely a pretty good chapter. So now I'm interested in fairy tales. It's just amazing how that works. <laughs> so I got to give a huge credit to Mashima for having two chapters per week for an entire month. So he he's a damn hard worker. I give him that. And you know, ending off with this pretty good chapter, I'm I'm really up I'm really um uh, amused to see how much he can really work out. So yeah. Good job, Mashima. Good job. This series doesn't get talked that much, does it? I don't know. Maybe because the people doesn't know about this series that much, or maybe it's just the maybe they're just not intrigued by it. I don't know. I mean, I can understand for Bakano no Hero Academia since it is relatively new to the French, to the whole what, uh, weekly Shonen Jump. I can understand that, but Nanosu no Tanzai, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because the people don't really know about it, or maybe the people don't take the time to care. I know Japan really care. I know it is popular in Japan. Make no mistake. But what about in the in the in the Western state? I haven't heard anything about it. You gotta dig deep, I guess. Maybe that's the case. I probably had to dig deeper. But I'm still going to read this chapter, um, this series, no less. I'm going to still re- read the new series. I'm still going to talk about it because I still think it's one of the, um, the good series that I really come to know and like. So, you know, well, chapter 126 is no exception because I thought it was actually a good chapter. Now, the last chapter, it was all about um, talking about what to do next. This chapter is more of about um, what's going on with um, Daini and exactly going to be the next route to go for. Since now, everything seems to shift this course, thanks to Goddard, who's perhaps becoming to, uh, who is becoming a very um, troublesome person, let alone the fact it gets annoyed, it gets, it gets you frustrated to see how this whole thing is going to come down. All because of his curious sake or whatever experiments that he keep conducting. Even in the wrong time like this. Because now the situation got worse. Especially what happens at the very end. Which not only not only the scenario of the story is changing course. But at least in, in manga wise. You know as a reader. We're going to get a guidance of Daini. So that should be interesting to read. But yes, the whole thing has been shifted because of the whole, you know, this whole curiosity sake, experiment sake of this character, freaking um, Goddard, who, uh, you know, it started to frustrate me, to be honest. But I, the, the thing about this is it is made to be that way since his character is, um, you know, very shallow shell of, of a, per, of a, of a, you know, not really a person, it's a puppet, <laughs> so, it's a, it's, it has that Pinocchio story s- style, and, you know, to be honest, I'm actually, in, I'm actually more interested to see his, his guide in the most, but in in this case right now, you know, of course, we we have to deal with the fact that he comes off like an anti-hero without really trying to be anti-hero, because, it's, again, he has no, he has no emotions, no feelings, no real, true understanding understanding of the human living beings and the feelings and everything else about it so it comes down like uh not really a forced situation a forced situation but more of it just it just is what it is so you know i'm actually int- i'm actually intrigued that that's how um the manga car written this way so i like this kind of way of how handle things like like this so basically, King and Diana interact with each other, and yeah, pretty much she doesn't really know King. However, she does know Melodus to the to the point that he doesn't really call, she doesn't really call him 
captain, which is um yeah, pretty much it it it, it can be you know I did say it, it was probably because of the stroke of the hammer, which I thought I was going to be right until some of the parts is just becoming so um weird because he does she doesn't remember King, she remembers Melodus and call him Melodus. Now you could say you just go to that timeline, which makes sense, but. You know, to block out a lot of things, it seems a little bit too too much of alteration to her mind. So this only raises the question: Is it really that much of? Is it really that hammer that really messed her up? So you know, I I was beginning to think: Okay, I don't think it's the hammer, even though Merlin has said the hammer that struck her so hard that she probably forgot. Which I wouldn't take. I wouldn't believe that. But ever since Goddard could do the memory uh, alteration uh, technique that he has. I doubt that. So that's when when that when that reveal happened, I should have known better, and I you know I kind of expected that ever since this chapter. Last chapter, I didn't think mind it because you know what what is God to gain from this doing this experiment as he says? What is there to gain? That's why I didn't bring him up at all. Now this one makes sense and is rather foolish of this guy to even do it right now. Um, Merlin's Merlin used a her or her orb used a projectile of her body self. So at least that's one way to say, hey, look, she's right there. You know, instead of seeing a floating orb. But yeah, that's how this is gonna work. But it is kind of funny to see in the whole you know memory being her memory being um not erased, but basically amnesia, and to the fact that Hulk almost got eaten alive. <laughs> it's kind of it kind of had a little funny imagery right there. So. Pretty much, there's pretty much they have a problem with her losing her mind, especially in this case of scenario, where they're going against the demons, the Ten Commandments. So it cannot possibly come in the worst timing. And again, you get to see Gutter. Obviously, he's obviously he's he's the one that's being playing this whole role. And you know, again, they test each other. King and Diana test each other to see if she remembers anything. She doesn't even remember the Seven Deadly Sins. So. Again, this it feels like memory just disappearing, but as the, the the case is, her her memory was actually being alternated thanks to Goddard. So, um, and you know the worst the worst problem now is that she left <laughs> she left to go to uh, she left in a hurry, as they say, and she was supposed to go to this location bef- where she was be where she was. Before she joined the seven deadly sins, because since she doesn't know the seven deadly sins in her mind, that means she's going to the place that she gone before she joined the the the, the team. So this is where the explanation comes in from Goddard, you know, looking all fancy as himself, I guess. You know, this guy is a strange being, but you know what I mean. But hey, I, I guess you could say his fashion sense is better than the other one, right? So. Then we have these two talking to each other, and he pretty much tell them he erased them. He erased the the memory of King and some others with Lost World. So yeah, Gutter really came off as an asshole. But again, the fact that he doesn't know uh, anything about human or feelings or emotions or anything like that, it just it comes out like you know, uh, it comes out uh, not really a. Not really like his attention really want to do that because he's just that evil. It's more like he's curious and he just want to see and prove in his test. But that's the problem. That I guess I guess that's why it intrigues me to see this these characters these sins. You know they don't come off really bad. They just come off really um a character that could frustrate you because of how they try to make it seem like they're doing the right thing or try and do it a good deeds, but they come off a really uh, negative, negative light. So, again, these characters have their own problems, and you know, King was dealing with the whole tire fairies, you know, not believing him anymore, or, or hate him because he left, he leave them for like over thousands and thousands of years ago. So, with this case, we have um, Goddard, who's so curious to see whether the human feelings can really live up to this, to the, to their um, attention, as in love, for this sake. So he tested her to see if if her memories could if her memory erased to see if her love can be erased as well unless she unless she really serious about like even my memories erase love can never be erased and stuff like that. So not only King found out that Diana knows 
that King that King and Diana has a relationship together, or you know, more say like a really strong bond. But the fact that now that he erased it because he was just that he was curious to see if if she really meant that way of memory erase equal fr- love forever and stuff like that. You know, basically you see love can be forever last and. And God would pretty much say like, well, I erased her memory and she doesn't know you. So therefore, it's, it's, memory is just a store of information, which is really, really asshole thing to say. But again, he has no understanding of anything. But I do, I do like the whole King uh, reaction to the whole thing, especially the later part once he went back to the normal size and asked him one last thing to see if he feel anything about doing this um, feel like what he feels like erasing her memory. Now, if you recall, King he felt regret so badly to leave the village of behind and feel pretty much regret of his sin, everything about it. So with Goddard, he feels nothing. He doesn't even understand it. So again, this is where you got understand that his character doesn't really understand anything about human or anything about feelings. So it only makes him do at whim at anything. So if if he understands that, he will not do this. Maybe. I don't know. If he was a bad guy, if he's an anti-hero, if he's really that uh, much of an asshole on purpose, then he probably then he might still do it. And that would just come off in a bad light. But for in this case, he just come out like not understanding so much. So therefore, he would do a lot of things that unintentionally be an ass of it. So in this case, he's like feelings. I don't want to understand that question. And he's just saying he's unnecessary. He doesn't know if it's really necessary. Of course it's necessary. But he's saying it's not necessary. So that pissed King off, but you could tell that he's he just he just um holding back because of course he of course God doesn't know anything about feelings. That said, he still struck him because obviously this is all his fault still. Saying he doesn't like the fact that he says they're unnecessary, so so the only thing he could tell him is don't toy with them. And he just hit him. Just to, you know, like a, like a, just like a, a heat of warning, which is understandable. But I like the whole, his reaction uh, uh, in front of Goddard. I thought it was appropriate reaction. So now they're going to find Daene. And, you know, it's good. It's, I, I, again, the, the whole story is shifting course. Supposedly they were supposed to find Escanar and they're supposed to power up, as they said. But now we're going to find her. So I don't know how much this shift is shift the course of the story, but the only reason why I'm saying it might shift a lot is because Diana is going back to her home with the the giant clan, the Mega Dozer, which is um you know which the worst case and worst thing is it passed Edinburgh, Ed- Ed- which is where the demons are are relaxing there. They are there right now, at least unless they left. Because that's the only way I can see this this kind of worst case scenario be prevented if they leave already, if they already left. But we're going to see her guiding, which I'm actually interested to see how this whole giant clans thing it intrigues me to see something refreshing because we have seen a lot with the fairies. We have seen, um, you know, uh, we already saw the guiding of Bon, which is good. So now we want to see Diana guiding. So I want to see how this all come down to. You know, meeting from from you know knowing her origin to meeting King to not knowing King for a moment and then remember him now remember him now. So yeah, it was a good chapter. I enjoyed this chapter. Um, I don't know if they really if they really going to straight to the Ten Commandments already to fight them all without getting any power up. But maybe 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 they will not fight them. At least I'm hoping not because. I, cause that they would just get slaughtered, and if they manage to beat them, still that would be a little bit too much. But we'll see what happens. Um, it, it does intrigue me to see what's going to happen next, as well as it's just to see the guidance. I'm more interested to see the guidance, if anything, because I do like guidance in the stories like this. So you know, seeing Bond guidance was was good enough. So I want to see hers now. So yeah, good chapters. I am looking forward to the guide in, in thirty eight pages. Wow, that's pretty. That's that's a lot. <laughs> these these people in this in this magazine really works hard, don't they? Yeah. 
At long last, we have this chapter. And I think a lot of people was anticipating for Kaneki so damn much that I even I was too. And because of that, I think people were disappointed to see not him coming back yet. And believe me, I understand. But if you ask me, I was not disappointed. In fact, I'm more in thrill to see how much they're going to build up until he shows up. Now, if he doesn't show up, that's a shame. But if he does show up, it just makes it much, much more devastating in this whole arc. And because of what I'm saying, the whole buildup is coming on. It's just that, you know, of course, the very end of the chapter is just what is is not only really good way to like end the chapter, but it's just it only gives that whole buildup of Kaneki coming back and much more very, very, very anticipated. You know, because ever since Takizawa brings er, er, scream out to the world or that place, you know what I mean, to that if you want to find this guy getting tortured, come to the sound of the barrier. So that only brings up a lot of character to in that one area. And when that happens, that means it's just going to be a, one explosive development. And her coming... In, in the end of the chapter just only going to make this more and more exciting so you know this whole chapter was so good I really really enjoy the entire content of this chapter and I feel like these developments is really really coming in and it's really just going to make this uh, a really good a really damn good arc in the end because all these developments, and I really don't, re- I really don't think there is no status quo and anything like that. Don't think that's going to happen. It, 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 Tokyo Ghoul isn't known for that, so it, it's not going to happen that way. Everybody's really going to learn from from this arc in their own perspective way, especially Uri, who probably going is probably for the best to have this development that's going through him right now. Especially the fact that for the past 30, almost 30 chapters now, for the past almost near 30 chapters that he has been too much of a simple, uh, solo-minded, selfish guy. That it seems like now this uh, this chapter brings uh, more more to um, his character as well as make him not, maybe perhaps, just maybe not make him as much of a jerk as he was before. And maybe he could finally open up to his own team. So it seems like that's what is going right now. Which I appreciate that it's happening right now. Instead of like making this go on for a long time. And then finally make him understand his teammate. Or make him appreciate his teammates and everything around him. So this this, cha- this chapter is so good with that development coming in mind. And just oh. It just makes me wonder how the aftermath is going to end up being like, as well as what's the next arc going to even cover? Because the next arc, you know, this arc has been has been like one big reunion in in a different manner. Like Takizawa, he finally comes back, but of course he's now the villain and he's more he's just a psycho now. So it just, it, it really makes me wonder what's next for this whole thing. So. Chapter 29, we start off with Masuki getting attacked by the guards, the Ogiri guards. And, you know, he couldn't handle them. And they pretty much, they pretty much nailed him down. And it was going to for the kill as Ude was supposed to be eaten by the big man. Pretty disgusting scene to see that. But, yeah, that's what's really happening. Then Ude just go ra- uh, rampage. Just starting killing the guards. Losing his, losing his mind. He just went berserk. Kill the guards, all all the guards. Then he was trying to go after Big Madam, but unfortunately, Big Madam is in fact a double S ghoul. So Big Madam just utterly defeated Ude in a very slaughtered manner, just stabbed him every every part of it, and just like yeah, you pretty much get the idea that Big Madam is no joke. And as disgusting she is, she's really damn strong. So, uh, Ude just got annihilated. Now. Um, it's like, I think this moment is happening because if he was a berserk and he managed to defeat everything, he's not going to learn anything about this. He's not going to learn about himself or self-respect or any respect for anyone else. So in this, in this case, the fact that he went berserk and he managed to kill the guards, which is a good feat, but 
he couldn't take down the big man, which will credit him a lot. It only makes him feel very vulnerable, and it only makes him it makes him just feel like he's just not as strong, and he's just never gonna work out this whole selfish route that he's been going through. Now, this whole berserk does ha- did happen because of the, the idea of the 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 project the experiment that he went through that he's supposed to expand his cognate. And, you know, this is the consequences right here. He couldn't handle it since not only he went rampage, the fact that he was hearing so many different minds of his own, it, it, it almost it seems like a Kagaja, but it's not. Uh, well, let's, let's just say otherwise, but it's not a Kagaja. But the fact that so many minds come into his head and he cannot bear with it, it, it goes to show you that he can't handle the, the experiment that he went through, the whole power-up situation. He just loses his mind, just keep repeating himself of promotions. And to the fact that he actually feel he actually um crawled up and pretty much had become a very vulnerable, weak man. Talking about like how much he hates this team, how much he hates everybody who getting in his way of the promotion, but he just can't get it. He just can't really get it. So it go it finally shows his characteristic. And it also shows that regardless how selfish he's, he, he sounded from that, he's really uh, hurt. He's really hurt because he feels very solo. He feels alone. And, he's in, you know, he, again, he finally opened up. And it mo- most likely he wasn't aware that Masuki was there to hear all of his um, hatred and all this um, hurtful feelings that he'd been dwelling up for the past time. So, it actually made me feel sorry for Ude for once. I mean, like I said, I call him the poison of the team. Because, you know, he seems like a a solo guy. Everyone else is all cooperative. Him, that's a different story. But now he's finally opening up. And it seems like maybe, just maybe, he could finally get the development that he could get, get with the team. And perhaps in the next arc, you know, they will probably work together much better than now. So you know everybody's learning their thing. Shirazu did a good work as a team, as a leader, and it proves when he defeated the Nutcracker. Psycho, I think we're getting that now, as you see at the very end of the chapter. Masuki, you know, he wants to be proven that he he he's not a hindrance and wants to help as much as he can. And Ude, he's such a you know one uh, lone wolf that now he after being defeated utterly defeated by the big madam even after the power up it just seems like now he's just going to start to appreciate the teammate because they go all help him not only help him to defeat the 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 the, the, the defeat the case but also actually get the promotion that he probably seek and desire so instead of like trying to go for it for on your own why not use your friends help you uh, go work together with your friends in order to get that promotion so maybe that will come in mind Masuki gets attacked when he when he tried to approach to him. Yeah, um, supposedly he elbowed him, and because of that, um, yeah, it's no surprise. It's no secret that he he is a girl, he is a woman. So you know he what he is going through the period of time. So yeah, you know it's strange to me to just keep saying he, but he that. But we're gonna address that until he comes out and to say I'm a woman. I'm gonna be that way instead of like. As a person, as a man, she wants to be. So, when it because of that, the whole going through the period, it, that's where the blood comes in again, comes out again. Sorry, and her, his cognate appeared and it pretty much control, um, stopped uh, Ure, made, managed to control him. But at the same time, telling him that you know he's not really in the way. Nobody's in the way. They're gonna work together out of this, and he understands that lonely feeling, and he hates it too. But they're gonna pass this, so Udi managed to calm down, and at the same time he managed to take a sniffle of the blood. That that's where he gets it. Uh, he, that's where he starts. That's where he learns that Masuki is in fact a woman. Now I don't know what kind of what kind of this this um scenario plays out for like knowing that he's a woman. I don't know what's going to be play in a future time. I don't even know what's the what what's going to establish from this, especially with Masuki. We still don't know about his past. We only assume that he's he killed his parents and then become a he wants to become a man. 
stuff like that. I, it's strange, and I hope we get more of that development soon. Um, maybe in later time, we'll see. But now that Ure knows he's a woman, I don't know what exactly that's going to bring out in the future time. I don't think it's offensive. It's more of a, something that for a plot, uh, more for of a, a plot device in the future time, or more like, a, you know, like a character, the, the uh, plot, uh, the character development. We'll see what, what that will bring up. So, Big Man will obviously was still there, about to attack them, and then Suzuya and his squad finally arrived. So, I'm very hyped to see Suzuya meeting up Big Madam. Because, of course, if you recall his flashback, you know, you get the idea. This is all, this is going to be, not only for the mission's sake, but this is actually going to be a revenge from Suzuya. So, this is going to be, this this got me excited to see how this is going to go down. Now, granted, because of that, we might not see Kaneki, uh, Sasaki, Sasaki scenario uh, completely. But that's a good thing because we're going, we're 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 closing a lot of things. We close the Nutcracker moment. I don't know what's the Uta um, situation going on, but hopefully we we'll, we we'll get to know that in the next chapter. Suzuya and his squad going against the big madam. That's next, so sh- sh- this should finally cover up uh, the situation. And I'm looking forward to see how Suzuya and the big madam are going to interact with each other. Washu, you know, he's reporting the entire scenario going on. Akira lost the communication, so um, we safely we could assume that she is definitely going to where Takizawa and Sasaki is at. Should be exciting, and I, I just don't like the fact that Washu just said that leave Sasaki to himself, let him buy us for some time. What the hell is that about? That pissed me off to hear that because I don't because I don't get this guy, this Washu guy, and really I really don't trust his his way of methods or his way of tactics. It's just bothers me so much and so you know of course that's what brings a more complexity to the entire tcg and the, the investigators and all the other stuff it just brings more tours that uh like you know not everything is all swell and good there's always going to be some problems or somebody's going to be a, such an ass to this whole thing and washer is no exception um what's interesting to me you know, we get to see Takizawa talking to Sasaki, who's pretty much looked near dead. And, you know, of course, we don't really get to see up close, but you could tell he's been bloody up in his around his face. But what's interesting to me is that Psycho is actually in the scene. She hasn't really appeared, but she's in the scene, and it only tells me that the reason why we didn't see her fight or her power from the two, from last chapter... It's because perhaps Ishida is saving for this chapter. I mean, not this chapter, this scenario. So we might see her power. And um, that's interesting to actually see it happening there. I don't know what makes it so significant of her not showing the power from the last from the last chapter. But whatever the case may be, I'm actually, gonna, I'm actually looking forward to see her coming down to meet Takizawa and fight him off for Sasaki. But... Maybe that might not happen. I don't know. But it is interesting that she's the only one there until the other person showed up, which I think uh, I think I'm uh, uh, so happy to see. It's just that it's just amazing that because the one that appeared and actually saved Sasaki from Takizawa was Hinami. And the reason why I'm surprised... Not okay, maybe not surprised, but me the reason why I'm happy is because of you going back from Tokyo Ghoul, the original, going back there, you we, we all remember her being an innocent, nice purse, uh, ghoul, and you know, she's so innocent, like, and she always want to help them by being there for them, you know, not there to fight, but being there to support, you know, especially for, especially for, um. Uh, Kaneki at that time, you know, first he first she was there being taken care of by Toka. Then she's just being there to um, taking care taking care to Kaneki as well as being by Kaneki. So, you know, this is, is really nice to see Hinami actually appear and now going against Takizawa no less. I like the fact she used her power uh, her uh, Kagane. On, t- on Takizawa. I do expect to see both of the Kagane to come in play. But I- I'm just so happy to see how much she has grown. And she has come to 
save Sasaki, her, her big brother. So it's just, it's, it's really nice. It's really a nice sight to see. And it's just amazing how much they've grown to this, to this scenario right now. And that's where the chapter ends. If we got Hanami going in there, now Psycho is there as well. I'm expecting to see Akira next. And then I'm not sure who's next to see. But it just keeps building up to make this one epic proportion to see Sasaki giving in to Kaneki. If it does happen. If it doesn't happen, then that's a, too bad. But I still like what we're seeing right now. And I still like this whole development that's building up to have Kaneki or having, you know, the worst case scenario of Sasaki come out and just utterly goes destroy Takizawa because I'm still expecting that. Takizawa is really asking for it. So if he's asking for it, he's going to get it. So in due time and I just can't wait for whatever's going to happen now. Is these these this series just keep um me anticipating more and more every passing chapter, which is great to know. So yes, this is a, such a really good chapter with a with a good development that's going to going down, and I'm hoping it won't stop there. And I'm hoping it doesn't go status quo after the arc ends. We have more uh, anticipation growing with Suzuya going against a big madam, uh, Hinami saving Sasaki, and possibly going against Takizawa, which is interesting to see how much she has gotten strong. Let alone the fact she finally gets a combat experience or the fact that we're going to see her combat experience in play. And then whatever happens next, it's just going to grow more anticipation, more and more and more. Just make it more exciting, this whole story. So, yeah, this is really getting so good right now. So, definitely, definitely can't wait for the next chapter. That's all for today's episode. So, now remember, Baku no Hero Academia is going to have two review chapters in this Friday's episode because there's no more Baku no Hero Academia for Tuesday's episode. I'm not going to do that anymore until further notice, but I don't think anything would change because if Baku no Hero Academia gets popular, it might end up coming out in Thursday, which is good for me because it will come out with third with Bleach, One Piece, and you know Baku no Hero Academia. So you know the only thing I guess I wish for it come out the same day would be Haku, but that's a different story. So at least I'm gonna make it. Equal, um, re, uh, equal length of m- mangas with three chapters here and three chapters the other one. Unless one of them gets a double chapters, but you know, let's not get ahead of us, ourselves. So that's it for today's. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and you know, of course, of course, continue working on those. Gotta get those intro. If I can find an intro, I gotta think of something to make an intro. I don't know. I, I kind of wanted to make it so appealing. To, at least at least in my point of view. I'm not sure it would be a good thing for you guys. But then again, it's just an intro. You can just skip it and then get to the episode, right? And yeah, that's about it. So um, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And spread the words and let them know about my podcast. And yeah, I'm going to continue bringing on more and more of these episodes. So until then, I'll see you next time for more. Take care, everyone.